Hey everyone. <clears throat> get 10% off your butt with code HALFFUN at checkout. I tried hard to get this discount code for you guys, so show them some love. Show yourself some love by giving yourself some nice booty, and it helps me out. On to the video. Today, I don't know, I figured it's time we talked about the grid combat. Never really had a full video for grid combat and subverse, so let's go ahead and start now. We'll be going in depth with the current problems, the current solutions from Studio Foe, and further thoughts. Let's begin. So I've talked about grid combat in other videos, but I've never taken the time to break it down for its own separate video. Subverse is a game that tries to combine multiple elements and gameplay mechanics to build this collaborative game. You spend time within dialogue scenes to build relationships with characters and understand the backstory of the universe to the likes of the Mass Effect franchise. You then participate in space combat to navigate through the galaxy to give the player tangible proof that they are in a vast, open, living galaxy. Whether it's exploring system to system, or the shoot 'em up sections just above the planet and ship orbits. Lastly, add grid combat as a component that gives the player the feel of touching down the surface of the ships and planets as if they're able to explore them themselves. In retrospect, these are relatively smaller game mechanics compared to the vastness you may get from a third or even a first person shooter. Those, however, are more problematic for smaller dev teams as they require a lot more time for polishing and developing, especially if they're not all randomly generated. So, let's say you're making a story-based game with the intention of exploring a huge universe. So big, in fact, you want to start a Kickstarter and give the option for some of the backers to have their own planets. You don't want to randomly generate planets or build a survival game on each planet. You're making a handcrafted experience for every place that you discover. So, you intertwine multiple gameplay mechanic experiences to form a game this vast. Smaller gameplay mechanics so you can make them more tight and develop more of them within a reasonable amount of time. It's not a game of exploring each planet, but as many as possible. Seeing different species, cultures, environments, and stories all within a handcrafted story-driven experience. Great, so we've established why we've made our decision, but if we're making grid combat for roughly, I don't know, say, 528 planets, how do you make a grid combat experience without it getting too repetitive? Okay, let's put the hypotheticals away and talk about subverse. So we've gotten a taste of the grid combat experience and, well, it doesn't quite stay on par with the shoot 'em up sections. What makes this difficult is how the shoot 'em up sections give you more freedom with the controls and decisions in the combat. Grid, on the other hand, is turn-based. And more so, it's also developed to be very straightforward. Foe wants to develop subverse for as many people as possible, and naturally, grid-based games tend to be more mentally challenging than how fast you can move your character. Then comes the discussion of difficulty versus accessibility in video games. Luckily, that's not necessarily the case for this example. On top of that, Foe already has a solution for difficulty in the form of optional difficulty missions. More on that in a later day. I think the problem with grid combat is how bare bones the experience is. You put dudes down and you dish out damage. Yay. It's the fact that one mission isn't very different from the last. You fight different factions, and you can choose different mantics and waifus to fight with on a board that's relatively the same layout, but with a different backdrop. Obviously, that's not going to vary up the experience very much. Studio Foe officially came out and addressed this issue by offering some solutions to remedy this. Some of these solutions are directional damage, such as backstabs. We've seen assassins in the game already flank and attack from behind. All that's needed is the extra damage or effects that may come from the backstab attack or allowing for your troops to do backstab attacks. Environmental hazards were the next thing mentioned. Example used was exploding barrels. Hazards are smart because you can design multiple creative hazard ideas. These mechanics are considered a neutral game item and can therefore be used by the enemies or the player which can significantly vary up each gameplay encounter. They also mentioned adding a greater variety of maps in both layout and looks. I agree. If we're sitting on a small board, let's at least keep a good variety of locations, even if one asteroid needs to look a little different from the last. One of my favorite experiences is from Pit People. Some story-based missions require you to travel through the grid boards to get to the final board and fight the boss. This would be a cool idea to travel through ships or for handcrafted story moments. I'm not saying design an entire open world, but I'm, I've seen some badass linear sequences pulled off using this. Also, I've seen some games such as Heroes of Might and Magic add walls that block the center of the board, requiring either range attacks exclusively or to perform a mechanic to open up the wall. 
Needless to say, grid combat isn't as straightforward as it may seem at first. There are ideas out there. They mention new AI patterns and priorities as well. Kind of vague and not many things currently in the grid fights to prioritize, so we'll have to wait and see a little bit more on that one. Next up was the movement set tweaks to the Mantics. I agree. The tank character is not acting like a tank right now. Also, I really wouldn't mind seeing some Mantics added that can buff, debuff, spawn more miniature Mantics or explosives, see a Mantic take up more than just a 1x1 tile, offer unusual but unique mechanics, or a Mantic that can manipulate the environment. Mantics have a lot of room to grow, and seeing how we have many more Mantics to discover in the game, I want to put some of these ideas out there as early as possible. And let me reiterate that manipulating the environment could be as simple as putting down a barrier or a barricade or putting down explosive barrels. There's many things you can do to manipulate the environment. More interactions from the waifus was also mentioned. I think this was referring to dialogue or how they react to events. Either way, I did hear that they're rehiring the VAs to come back and add more combat dialogue in general. And I don't think all of that is going to just space combat. Lastly, Studio Foe mentioned UI and optimization tweaks, which they've already knocked out of the park in terms of the UI as is. So I have no doubt they'll continue to make it look good and feel good. I would like to see more visuals on screen, such as waifu ultimates that pop up every once in a while. You know, just more of those animated moments. It would be nice to get more visuals for moments such as critical hits or anything else to help with the screen not looking so static. As you can see, there are a lot of improvements to make with the grid combat, but it sounds like the team has the right perspective about going about the improvements. It makes me excited to see what they'll have in store. A couple of other noteworthy things, they have confirmed that upgrading Mantics will be coming to the game, and they're even collaborating with an artist that will be mentioned at a later date to help design the new Mantics. Their goal is to make each Mantic worth collecting and to keep them relevant for the duration of the game by evolving them. This apparently applies to Grid and surprisingly Pandora, meaning it might not be so random which Mantics are getting a hold of your waifus after all. Apparently some of the Mantics were placeholder Mantic meshes, but they didn't really specify if this was for the current four that we have for placeholder ones or whatever ones are still in development, but I'm sure if it was the latter then they probably wouldn't have mentioned that at all. They did show off an image of what the evolution of Mantix would look like, but all the images on the website are really small, so I can't really show you guys the images without them getting too blurry. I'll try the best I can here. In fact, that's a problem with all the images they've been putting into their blogs, so hopefully they start putting some bigger images in the future to use. Helps out content creators like me, please. Final thing to talk about today was there was a Reddit AMA that was conducted by the team back in April. There were a few questions pertaining to the grid combat that may give us some insight to what they're focused on at the current moment. The first question was asking about the likeliness of the grid combat compared to XCOM. One Eye Jeremy, the lead software engineer on the project, said, quote, While we do want to bring more mechanics to the table on later releases, unfortunately, I think it's too unrealistic to make the mode as complex as XCOM given the scope of subverse, several modules, etc. End quote. Given how the game is currently built and the entire focus of the game doesn't revolve around strictly the grid combat, I think it's fair they aren't designing it to be as in-depth as XCOM. On top of that, they aren't designing it to be like XCOM at all, with the cover base system and etc. There are plenty of other grid based games that don't use the mechanics of XCOM. Final Fantasy Tactics and Heroes of Might and Magic come to mind as primary examples that were actually used for the inspirations of Subverse. Other games like Pit People have a unique way they approach combat by making all the units choose an attack before ending your turn. However, XCOM has always been the more popular game in the genre and is the one that always gets drawn to. Needless to say, I think there are other examples for comparison with the design of Sub vs. Grid Combat. Kristoff, in multiple past interviews, even mentioned they aren't designing it to be like XCOM. That might give people a better perspective on how they're designing the Grid Combat. That being said though, I still wouldn't mind seeing some dynamic camera zoom-ins for certain actions that take place. It doesn't have to be massively zoomed in like XCOM seeing how Sub vs. boards aren't designed like a 3D play space. But, I'll take anything I can get over the static camera for the current grid combat. This was a question I actually ended up asking One-Eyed Jeremy on the AMA as well. I asked about more visual cues and audio feedback, even some missions with challenge requirements. He agreed that the grid combat needs more feedback and they're experimenting with ideas such as critical hits to make it feel more dynamic. I think I edited the challenge question in there too late and he might not have seen that so that'll have to be a question for another time. 
Either way, I'm hoping to see a bit more on screen, and fingers crossed, that's what they're referring to by UI tweaks for grid combat. Obviously, I may have missed ideas or problems with the grid combat, so put them down in the comments below for me to read, or even the developers that they decide to swing on by. If you want to help me out, you can leave a like before you leave, or buy yourself a butt pillow with the link below and get yourself a discount with code HALF BY at checkout. Thank you all for watching a long time and a hard time, and I'll see you guys next time.